Today, we're gonna be looking at the greatest players from every category in NBA history. These players are not the best at everything, but they excel at one aspect of basketball better than anybody else has before. And I'm gonna rank these players based on these 12 categories. Starting off with three-point shooting, Steph Curry. Being the face of three-point shooting, Steph Curry truly revolutionized the three-pointer. And he made it one of the most important shots in the game today. Before Steph Curry, three-pointers were not as popular as they are today. Now, every single time you watch a game, it seems like players almost take as many threes as they do two-pointers. Not only did he popularize threes in the NBA today, he's by far the best to ever do it. He has broken almost every single record relating to three-pointers. He surpassed Ray Allen for the all-time leader in three-pointers, and he was the first player in NBA history to make over 400 three-pointers in one season. And since then, he has done it multiple times. He has a very unique style of shooting, taking shots that other players wouldn't dare to take. And he has shown time and time again that he can make shots from nearly any location on the court. Mid-range, Michael Jordan. Mid-range jump shooters are a dying breed in the NBA. Players would much rather take a few steps back and get that extra point rather than settling for a mid-range. But the mid-range shot used to be one of the most popular in the league, and it was perfected by Michael Jordan. The move he used most for mid-range was his signature fadeaway. Jordan's fadeaway was absolutely unguardable, and it wasn't the only way that he could get to his spot. He consistently hit pull-up jumpers as well. Most people already look at Michael Jordan as the greatest player of all time, and there's not many things Jordan couldn't do. But when it comes to the mid-range jump shot, nobody could do it like Jordan. Kobe Bryant is a honorable mention, modeling his game a lot after Jordan, but Kobe was more skillful and methodical with his shot. Although he's a great pick, the edge goes to Jordan. Layups, Kyrie Irving. There are many ways you could look at this. You could argue a big man who's able to just overpower his defender and make layups consistently because he's seven feet tall would be better at layups than a guard. But Kyrie has the deepest layup package in NBA history. He has made some of the most acrobatic, difficult circus layups we have ever seen. Again, it's difficult to put layups into one category considering there are so many different ways you could look at it. But considering Kyrie is the flashiest and the best at pulling off moves mid-air to get past his opponent, and he's consistently been great at them, Kyrie's at the top. Dunking, Vince Carter. With Vince Carter's dunking ability, he's been given nicknames like Air Canada and Half Man Half Amazing. He got this reputation in the 2000 dunk contest when he pulled off dunks we had never seen before. We had seen amazing dunkers like Michael Jordan, Dominique Wilkins, and Dr. J, but Vince Carter was different. He won the dunk contest easily, and he shocked the crowd with every single dunk. And he continued to pull off these insane dunks during games as well. The craziest being in the 2000 Olympics, when Vince Carter jumped over a 7'2 center. He did not dunk on this man, he cleared over him. This cemented his legacy as the greatest dunker of all time. Post moves, Shaquille O'Neal. If you could give the ball to any center in NBA history inside the paint and all you need is one bucket, you're giving the ball to Shaquille O'Neal. His bully ball play style was unguardable in his prime. Shaq would simply move his opponent out of the way and slam the ball through the hoop. Being the most dominant player in NBA history, nobody was able to stop him. Shaq never had the best technique or footwork when it came to the low post, but he realized he didn't need to have all that. He was able to simply overpower his defender, and there was nothing they could do about it. He spent his entire career in the low post, never being able to shoot from the mid-range or the three-pointer, or even from the free throw line. But when it comes to the best player from inside the paint, it's Shaq all day. Handles, Allen Iverson. Iverson was a six-foot-tall guard in an era led by big men. And still, Allen Iverson was able to use his quickness and his dribble moves to get past his defenders and score at will. The amount of grown men that Allen Iverson has left laying on the ground after hitting them with his signature crossover is insane. His crossover was his deadliest weapon, and he was able to get anybody with it, even Michael Jordan. Kyrie was an honorable mention, but Allen Iverson pioneered a lot of the moves we see Kyrie and other dribblers use today, and he did it better than anybody else. Free throws, Steve Nash. This one is pretty straightforward. Steve Nash had the highest free throw percentage of all time at 90.43%. One lesser known fact about Steve Nash's free throw shooting is that he's also the most successful free throw shooter between shot one and shot two. Players shoot an average of 5% worse on their first free throw than they do their second. 5% is a pretty huge gap when it comes to makes and misses. Steve Nash, on the other hand, 
averaged 90% on his first free throw and 91% on his second free throw. Many people have tried to figure out why, and the answer comes down to muscle memory. He always took a practice shot without the ball before shooting any of his free throws, which tapped into his muscle memory. Steve Nash's mastery of muscle memory and shooting routine makes him the greatest free throw shooter of all time. Passing, Magic Johnson. Magic is not the all-time leader in assists and hasn't broken any significant records relating to assists. But Magic was consistently able to get the ball to his teammates in ways that we have never seen. He was a 6'9 point guard in the 1980s, which was already abnormal for the time. His no-look flashy passes were unlike anything fans had ever seen. He led the Lakers with his creative style basketball, and they were named the Showtime Lakers. In his career, Magic led the NBA in assists on four separate occasions. On top of that, he averaged at least 10 assists per game in 9 straight seasons. His mix of size, speed, and basketball IQ is what made him such a transcendent player. Because of these attributes, there wasn't a pass he could not make on the basketball court. Rebounding, Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain has records in almost every aspect of basketball, but rebounding is where the distance between him and the next greatest player isn't even close. He's the all-time leader in rebounds, beating Bill Russell by over 2,000. And although this may be due to his longevity, he also holds almost every single other rebounding record. He holds the all-time record for the most rebounds in a game with 55, and averaged more rebounds per game than any other player ever has with 22.9. It's very impressive that Will has been able to hold on to these records since the 1960s, and it goes to show that he is the greatest rebounder ever. Steals, John Stockton. This category cannot be confused when judging the overall greatest defenders. This category is strictly based on the best at recording steals, and John Stockton has the all-time record for the most steals in NBA history by a very wide margin. With 3,265 steals, he has over 500 more than the next person. He also just so happens to be the all-time leader in assists, but this is mainly because he was on a team with Karl Malone and was always able to get him the ball. But when it comes to his steals record, this was achieved strictly through being the best at getting them. Blocks, Hakeem Olajuwon. One of the most underrated defenders of all time, Hakeem has almost 4,000 blocks in his career and over 2,000 steals. In fact, he is the only player in NBA history to record over 3,000 blocks and 2,000 steals in a career. He was consistently the best rim protector in the league for many years, and since his prime years in the 1990s, nobody has even came close. Hakeem once blocked 12 shots in one game and averaged over three blocks a game for his entire career. Some people consider Hakeem to be the most skilled ever offensively as well, which is a testament to the greatness of Hakeem Olajuwon. Clutch, LeBron James. A lot of people are not gonna like this pick, but no matter what you think about LeBron James, this pick isn't even close. Statistically, LeBron is a more consistent clutch shooter than Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. Of all shots taken to tie or take the lead in the last minute, LeBron ranks over Kobe and Jordan by a very wide margin. And after this past season, LeBron now has seven game-winning or game-tying shots in the final second of playoff games. No one else in NBA history has more than two of them. When you consider the pressure that LeBron has been under his entire career, he has always stepped up to the plate and delivered. The 2011 final series is the one mark on LeBron's career as a time when he did not show up. But out of the past 20 seasons, if we can only name one moment where LeBron didn't show up and give us a historic performance, that is insane. While LeBron was with the Cavs in 2006 and 2008, he was in a Game 7 both of these years and unfortunately fell short. But this was still a very young LeBron leading a terrible Cavaliers team. Since these two Game 7 losses, LeBron has played in 6 more throughout the 2000s, and every single time he has won. The past six Game 7s, every single time, LeBron showed up and led his team to victory, which leaves LeBron James as the most clutch player in NBA history. Let me know your guys' picks in the comments below, but that wraps up the categories. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to check out my last video where I discuss the top 10 greatest Lakers of all time. But with that being said, I'm out of here, and I'll see you on the next one.